Size 13. It's true. Oh, yeah, big feet. We, yeah, we both have big feet. Nice. Yeah. You know what they say about big feet, big socks. Bit, uh, 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 more expensive shoelaces. Is that true? I don't think so. That's one of the best They're perks of be having longer. big feet is you get more shoe, but you pay the same price. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I walk in the Foot Locker, and they go, how much does the size 8 cost? And they go, oh, that's $60. And I go, I'll have a 13. How much does that cost? And they go, $60. And I go, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another week of Film House. This week, we're talking about the sequel or the remake. What's better, what's worse, and sometimes are they even the same? The sponsors this week include Manscaped and Upstart. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code FILMHOUSE20 at manscaped.com. And you can go to upstart.com forward slash filmhouse to find out how low your Upstart rate is today. I'm joined by my panelists, who are so esteemed, James and Elise Willems. Hello. Hi, thanks and for having us. Um, Ryan Willems. How are you? Slightly less esteemed. <laughs> hey. Super esteemed. Most esteemed. Actually, Ryan, as you may know, is on a little podcast called uh, My Father the Murderer. But on those days when he's not <laughs> doing that podcast, he does the Wisecrack podcast mm, called yeah. Show Me the Meaning. Show mean. Me the Meaning. That's a Every smart episode? Podcast. Uh, like every other week. Okay. Maybe every other two weeks. First time I met Ryan was actually on a Wisecrack podcast. On the Donnie Darko episode. He whipped out a pizza halfway through, and I was <laughs> unsure if he actually worked there or not. <laughs> and you set your, you set your sights on him then and there. You said, I want this man. I want this boy, want this boy yeah, for our... I'm going to poach this man. He, he got a bottle of Tapatio somehow. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Mm. So this week, I want to talk about a little something near and dear to my heart. Crappy sequels. They are everywhere. They infect our everyday lives. Godfather 2. The worst thing that happened to cinema <laughs> was someone said, we need another one. Yeah. Uh, give it up. Joking aside, though, uh, it was announced today, uh, Thursday of this week, that Don't Breathe is getting a sequel, which is in the works, starring Woo! Stephen Lang. Okay. Once again, he'll be starring as his character. I feel um, like we should cast a blind guy. We're yeah. at that point in, a, sure. in society where blind roles are going to people who can see, and that's not fair. Hmm. Right. Well, so, or at least he should uh, uh, method it blind and, himself. And be blind himself. Okay. Is there anyone else returning to the project besides Stephen Lang? I, a few people. Uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, regardless, it's it's going to be the same character. What about Raimi, baby? That's Ra- all I care about. Raimi will produce it. He all will, right. He will collect okay. his check, uh, smoke his cigarette, and somehow still live to the old age of 95. So... Uh, sources do say that the plot picks up years after the home invasion of the first movie. The blind man has lived in isolation now. His peace is broken when he's visited by a violent and mysterious people who hold him accountable for his sins. So I guess this time he's the bad guy. Um, no, he's not like he's the hero. Can or, we uh, he was kind of the bad do a spoiler-filled recap of what happened at the end of that movie? Because I don't remember. Oh, exactly. absolutely. He tried to inject her with semen. I remember that part. <laughs> You're working oh. your way backwards. I, I, I remember that much. <laughs> there is there is a ex uh, vet. Uh, I guess reverse spoilers. <laughs> We're spoiling the movie Don't Breathe that came out three years ago. Uh, so Stephen Lang plays this uh, vet. A uh, uh, the hermit. There's a guy. Yeah. That, an old guy lives in a He's house. The idea is that he, he has he has a lot of money. There is a rumor that he has a, a safe in his house with, with a bunch of money in it. So some. Thugs, some kids get together. They don't want to hurt them. They just want to go in there and break in and get the safe and, and they take think care he's going to be this feeble old man. It's mm-hmm. not going to put up any kind of fight. No, Stephen yeah. Lang. He uh, he thought he was going to play Cable. That didn't happen. Uh, so then, yes, it all goes wrong, and then people get shot and killed, and then this girl's trying to hide from him, and she can't breathe because he has super hearing. But then think. does she survive? How does she gets yeah. knocked out, and then the movie takes a weird twist where. He tries to inseminate her. Yes. Yes, I remember that because he had a daughter that died. Correct. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. then he's trying to like have a new daughter. He had child, another child. woman tied up down there. That right. is. Yeah. Uh, that was like the reveal. Was like, oh, they thought they were just breaking in. Oh no, he's he's awake and dangerous. And oh shit, he has a twist. woman in here. Mm-hmm. Big There's twist. But then woman. I'm trying to recall: did the main character survive? Well, the main character, I, so, and something happens where they accidentally kill. The, w- the girl that he had been keeping locked up yeah. or she gets out or something. No, he accidentally kills her. That's right. And then he's like, Whoa. Then he goes, but wait, 
you've got vagina. Yeah. <laughs> and then he pulls out a turkey baser full of his semen. <laughs> and there's a pube in it, too. Oh, oh yeah. I remember it yeah. being real gross. Oh, yeah. He, like, he like heats it up. But so is she bit. fine? Does she make it but out? But then she gets, she is she escapes, she squirts it on him or whatever. That's she, right. like, sprays it in his mouth. She, like, crams it down yeah. his throat. And then, and then I think she escapes, but I don't remember what happened. You guys have that. great memories. I don't remember. I love yeah, this I, movie. I liked I don't it, too, and I don't even. Yeah, he does cram it into down his throat, I think. Yeah. A little. A little Filmhouse trivia for you, for you, Ryan. I technically the first time we ever did a film podcast on this channel was when we talked about Don't Breathe. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's I, a weird coincidence. I think we titled it Don't Go See, Don't Breathe, except that, we were all like, Yeah, we really liked it. it the episode movie. did great. It did fantastic. We uh, said we should do a whole show like this. The uh, the actress that is from this movie, she was also in Sam Raimi's Evil Dead remake. Mm-hmm. Which Isn't she also? She's also the one from. No, she's not the one from uh, the sick. The, the M Night Shyamalan, right? The visit? No, the the other one. The, the village. Uh, no. The glass. No. Yeah, Mr. Glass. Glass. <laughs> glass. She's not that girl, is she? I don't no, know. No, Jane Levy. The split. She is not. Oh, there she is. But she is in. Oh, she's in something else. Is she yeah. in a? Uh, uh, Suburgatory. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the Evil Dead remake. Me too. I thought it was great. I like it a lot. She'll Castle be... Rock. That's what I'm thinking of. She's from too. She was in Castle Rock. Yeah. She's in Car Fucker. She's a chameleon. She never <laughs> looks Jane. the same in anything that she's in because mm. her hair color always changes. And right. yeah, either that's way, that's all um, I see. I it, regardless, um, that news just sent me into a, a hizzy, tizzy, mm-hmm. a tizzy hail spin, mm-hmm. if you will. <laughs> he punched a wall. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I believe that uh, too often. A one-off, sometimes a low-budget movie, find success where they never really had any plans for a sequel uh, that they really seeded into their scripts in any way, shape, or form. But a studio sees all the dollar signs and says, give me another one. And also do it mm-hmm. fast. So the creatives have to scramble. Yeah, they dro- People drop out. Particularly and co- uh, common in horror. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Horror is horror like low-budget slasher films tend to be where these things happen. Um, so I actually want to go through some of these because I am calling this thing – a, a requill or a C make. I don't, I don't, what do you want to call it either way? But it's like when someone goes, let's do that again, except the creativity sort of gone because now the reveal is done. It's like trying to make a sequel to a predator movie. You go, yeah. well, the, well, the fun part's over. We already know what it is. Everything feels like fan, it's when it turns into fan service for itself. Like mm-hmm. the initial movie had a concept and an execution mm-hmm. and a story, but then they were like, oh, well, what was the best-selling action figure from the merchandising push that we did for this movie that had nothing to do with the movie? Oh, that's what the next movie is about, is, is what a lot of these things mm-hmm. are. And yeah. do we know that Don't Breathe is going to be like, – like, do we know what the sequel to this movie is going to be? Is it going to be like this? Is it a re- they, requel? They, they're saying the blind man has lived in isolation. His peace is broken when he's visited by violent, mysterious people who hold him accountable for his sins. The movie's called Don't Breathe Again. The it, it, if, if it has nothing to do with them trying to be quiet while he's stalking around slowly trying to find them, then I, maybe it's in space. Well, it sounds like it sounds like Don't Breathe was an interesting concept. Imagine you go to break into someone's house, you think they're a blind old man, but it turns out they're like basically Daredevil, mm-hmm. right? That's that's the concept. That's the pitch and that's where you start your screenplay or whatever. And now imagine if that happened Twice. Now they've <laughs> now they've yeah. named this concept as the blind man. It's like when the g- bad guy from Saw became Jigsaw. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there's a well, transition, and then now he's a caricature. You see it so and much. It's I mean, uh, Paranormal Activity has made so many movies off what which was a cool original, fresh, you know, way mm-hmm. of, of making a movie in premise. Something like uh, the one that I'm comparing this to, which is also in the uh, like contemporary filmmaking is Quiet Place, which was mm-hmm. like an interesting, you know, what mm-hmm. would happen if you can't make noise and you're living in a dystopian future where there's like creatures mm-hmm. that have overtaken it. And now they're making the sequel. Part two. Part two. And I'm a little, I'm not as enthused for the sequel mm-hmm. because I've I've seen the world. I don't know that. They, they also, uh, spoiler for A Quiet Place, leave now before we spoil this. They find out how to kill the monsters at the end. Mm-hmm. Sound, yeah, but there's, it's going to be like Gears of War, where it's like there's a nest. Mm-hmm. We, the only way to eliminate them is to go to the, you know, yeah. the concept was imagine a movie where the characters can't speak, mm-hmm. like that's where the heart, that's where the start, heart of beat of the movie is, mm-hmm. and so then you make that movie and people really like it and it's good and you're like, what about another one? You're like, okay, well you're already starting from the wrong place, which is two steps ahead. Well, it looks like with Quiet Place they're doing the whole like. 
the people that are survivors are actually who you need to worry about. Which thing, sucks. Which sucks. Exactly. Yeah. I, we've who cares seen about that before. That? But but I would say that you know don't I don't want to judge don't breathe's uh, log sure. line you know like I feel <laughs> like like it could still be original like and and Sam Raimi you know he's a professional entertainer he's like a P T Barnum well to me he, kno- he knows how to to set people's expectations we so. only have we only have one line to go on right but to me didn't Sam Raimi just have a movie come out recently that just was like the worst. No, he's. I mean, he he had <laughs> drag he me to hell. He, he made drag me to hell, and then he's made. No, but uh, it was, Ash, he didn't direct Ash it. Evil Dead. He didn't direct it. He. he oh he no! Uh, the the crocodile produced. movie, Crawl, and everyone loved that movie. No, uh, I don't. It. I'm not talking about it. Crawl. There's something else okay. that came it? out that I think was that like people the were grudge? like, it's just t- oh, the Grudge, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the Grudge. Well, he did the original Grudge. This is a remake of the remake of the Grudge. I know. It's like. I'm just saying. Sometimes when Sam okay, Raimi goes right. to the pond f- a couple two times, but I, to me this sounds kind of like a cuckoo type scenario, the Conjuring Universe cinematic universe, <laughs> which <laughs> as a whole I'm I'm a God. fan of. But it's the kind of thing where the Conjuring starts as this story about these paranormal detectives, mm-hmm. and they're and to set the ambiance, there just happens to also be a creepy doll in it. That's right. just to, that's just to get the ball rolling for the actual movie to begin. And they made a movie. About now there are movie three doll. movies about the doll, <laughs> you know, and one about a painting that was just hanging in the background. <laughs> those, like those seem to be at least somewhat seated, and those are all Blumhouse, right? Typically, or like Blumhouse level. Uh, where, yeah. Where they go, they're smart enough to go. You know what? We should seat in a doll. Well, we and they should, yeah. they get into trouble when it's not a mainline Warren movie. When it's not the Warrens solving a case, mm-hmm. like the 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 three main or conjurings, like then it becomes uh, you know we, when we, it's Annabelle comes home or whatever. That's when they get into trouble. I'm not as much of a cuckoo. I love the cuckoo. <laughs> I love the idea of a like of connected horror universes. I think it's really fun. Mm. Um, well, so, but then there's uh, you, we got the Insidious or the what's the other one? The other universes, the Sinisters. Sinister. Yeah, the well, Sinister the nuns. is not connected. To insidious, mm-hmm. but they're connected to themselves. Yes. Where the first movie was really good, and the second <laughs> movie was like, "Oh, red face man!" Yeah. Like as soon as you name it something, uh-huh. then 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 you start getting in trouble. Yeah. Oh, this trailer spoils everything. Uh, so yes, I think actually you guys are onto something. But I, I made a little list here of other movies where they basically just remade the movie, mm-hmm. but on a cheaper budget. I'm and say, I'm looking at this list, I can see the list, and mm-hmm. I. Hard disagree on some of these. Uh, go ahead, pick one. No, no, I, we'll, we'll get there when we okay. get there. Okay, gotcha. Well, um, actually, one I did want to talk about was the Final Destination series mm. because that was a fun little movie that I remember seeing. Sort of, I don't know. How did you guys all? Did the friend tell you to watch Final Destination? I watched it at a sleepover and had a great time. Never yeah. seen any. <gasps> Really? Wait, not even Five Null Destination? <laughs> Didn't we watch that during Arizona Circle Writers? I mean, it, there was some there was some Final Destination that was on a little you bit. I wasn't paying attention, and I wasn't watching it. We mm. didn't watch the whole thing. For, not even Four Null Destination? <laughs> Is that what they call them? There was, there was Final Destination. There was uh. Final Destination 2. There was Final Destination 3. Then there was Four Null Destination, <laughs> and then Five Null Destination. And I believe James is the only person who's seen all of these. I haven't seen three. Okay. And maybe not four. Well, the, So the concept is strong, I feel, mm-hmm. in Final Destination for one movie. Great premise, yeah. Right. So a character has a premonition before a horrific plane accident and says, I should not go on the plane. And because of his action, a few people, other other people get off the plane with him. And then the plane crashes, and then afterwards they all start dying mysteriously because they essentially cheated death, and now death wants to kill them all off one by one. Someone took that premise and said, I can do it five more times. <laughs> Maybe six. It made mm. money, baby. Well, again, it's because like the heart of the movie was imagine if you cheated death, but Jeff, death came back to collect later on, mm-hmm. right? That's, that's a cool thing. And then so part of it where all these deaths were just set pieces for the narrative. Mm-hmm. But all the movies that followed, they the the set pieces were everything. Those are the only pieces. So the movie at the writing level probably started with what are things we can show? What are these wild setups that we can do to make it seem that what's a movie though? Like if you read the summaries for like two and three and stuff, the first one is guy slips in the shower, and like gets strangled, mm-hmm. or a, a woman like sets the burner or something, and then. A, Things you, they're relatively mm-hmm. simple. Or someone gets hit by a car, mm-hmm. right? You didn't realize. Oh, they got hit by a car. I think yeah. the kid gets crushed by glass. 
at one point. Mm-hmm. But in two, it's like someone's in a car accident and then the airbag goes off and then they drop a match and then the match causes gasoline to light on fire and the gasoline goes and then blows up a gas tank next to a fence, which then fires the barbed wire on the fence to someone who's running away and splits them in half. So it's like, it becomes like a joke parody domino of itself. Yeah, de- death is basically that breakfast machine from the beginning of Pee Wee Herman's uh, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Big Adventure. Yeah, um, Mr. T cereal. Yeah, <clears throat> but- Pee Wee Matsu. My, my, going back to like the Don't Breathe thing and Final Destination and everything else, and other bigger franchises that I'll get to in a second do this where they, they I think they try to distill what this franchise is or what this idea is into its essence. Mm-hmm. And they go, that's great, but eventually just becomes sort of like pornography. You're like, I'm not really here for the story. Uh, it's not, it's oh. not being enriched by being a sequel. It's, we, you just want to see people die in her, it's because the conversation James has had where he created the Rude Goldberg machine of what just happened was a conversation that happened. That would, that'd be so cool when people die like that. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. all visual pornography. Yeah. Of, this of, scene, of though, is amazing. All of them are really good. Mm-hmm. All I, of the sequences that start these movies but are yeah, really do they, good. Yeah, do they inform or elevate a new story? No. No, not really. I, I not think they, they can do the soft reboot thing where they um, – they sort of acknowledge the previous characters, which I've actually never seen Final Destination 2. I've had no interest in it. But James uh, assures me that um, Final Destination, f- five old destinations, the best one. Five well, old destinations. Or the second best one. A lot of these stories, too, it's like Final Destination, are there any survivors at the end of a Final Destination movie that carry on to the next film? Because the question is, like, if you've got a character that spans – you know, so so say for example, you, like, death is the character that is there every oh, movie. Okay. It's I, candy meant, man. I meant like There's... take Nightmare on Elm Street. You've got Nancy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And Nancy's journey is one that she becomes, uh, she grows from kind of being a victim to being a sort of teacher to this next generation mm-hmm. of the Elm Street kids, right? She's, I mean, I wouldn't say she has great character evolution, but sure, there's something there. Um, Nev Campbell and Scream, I guess, has well, some sort of Jamie evolution. Lee Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the question is like, we, when you when it's just doing the same imprint mm-hmm. of this is a movie where this happens again and again. Mm-hmm. What's the evolution yeah. happening? Right. It's just yeah. It's just a re, you just reset all the chess pieces and you just play chess again. I would say though that that the Final Destination conceit is fun enough that I personally. Can watch, watch it, it over again. and over again, cool. like the different kinds of mm-hmm. you know. It's just is it like an up the upping the ante thing for you or like not really? It's just like kind of like you said. I like watching people die, <laughs> okay, <laughs> in different fun ways. I, there, there's I a morbid that. slash visual curiosity to see yeah, how are they going to up exactly. the ante. I mean, it's the same as Fast and Furious. Mm-hmm. I don't think yeah. anyone's still hanging around f- those movies because they wa- really want to find out what happens to Dom. They, precisely. I mean, like, yes. yeah. But they want to see what Dom's going to do behind the wheel of a M- Murcielago. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like, sure. uh, so those those are the things that really go wild. Like, like yeah. my, watching uh, Final Destination 3 and there's a roller coaster <laughs> that goes. <laughs> my f- favorite thing that sets, like, the Scream movies apart is that, I mean, they have recurring characters that, mm. that, their relationships evolve throughout those movies. You go from like, you know, Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox's characters hating each other to then they have this like bond. And of course, there's Dewey and Courtney and Courtney Cox, uh, David Arquette and Courtney Cox characters. Their relationship mm-hmm. through all those movies, which, is, which mm-hmm. is ridiculous. They go through Nev Campbell going. She's in Hollywood at the end. You know, yeah, they all they bring the Hollywood. At least those movies, like it feels like there's a weird. Not a great, but that, a weird trajectory. Well, but I think that's also that's Wes Craven going. I've done this before. I did. The, yeah. I did the There's Freddy also thing, a so. meta aspect where they have the stab movies, which is mm-hmm. really fun yeah. to them. Yeah, I would totally take Scream Two off your list because yeah. I don't think it's. Oh a no, no, I, I added Scream as one of the ones that's like more interesting. Okay. Um, I don't think it's terrible, but Scre- I think by the third yeah. one, it kind of falls apart. I, I love Scream Four. It was so one. fun. Scream Four is so. fun. There's a couple things about Scream because Scream is not about how the killer kills or what the killer does. It's like really not like maybe the opening sequence mm-hmm. that like there's a trend in the in the opening the very first kill and scream is supposed to be an elaborate like cat and mouse game that's mm-hmm. the only kind of motif other than that yeah the first movie is about breaking down the meta aspects of a horror movie inside a horror movie right mm-hmm. revealing the tropes and then and then following the tropes mm-hmm. which is why I think the sequels are so good and clever because while they are sequels it's the the question 
to start every new screen script, which actually the guy wrote them all at the same time. Mm-hmm. He had he had all he yeah. had one, two, and three all planned out before he they ever made one. But yeah. um, but was what's the next meta level? So first one is we know about horror movies exist in this world, so we're aware of the rules, and so. Let's. F- how do you deal in a world where a horror movie is taking place and you know what a horror movie is? And the second one is that what happened to you is now a horror movie. Mm-hmm. How do you proceed from that? And the third one is we're literally going to make the new horror. Mo- the, it's now we're so deep into this that it's a joke. <laughs> and people are consultants on it that yeah. were affected mm-hmm. by the murders. Like, I uh, I will say I do think Scream has some fun deaths in it. T- mm, to your point, yes. that, they, that it doesn't. I would say one of my favorite Scream deaths is in the third one. When they're they're trying to f- uh, figure out what the killer is, and they're in the Hollywood Hills in the in the house, and then there's a print from the fax machine that's that's going it's printing out pages of the script, and it's telling them like where the killer is, and it says you know the victim is the one who smells the gas, and then the whole house goes up in flames. Like I think that's pretty fun. <laughs> I, like I, I love the cheese of Scream too. Yeah, but those aren't why you watch. You know, I no, don't I think watch you're watching. because Nev Campbell's a f- female hero. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, I, I think. Uh, uh, one of the best examples, and it's obviously it's the exception and never the rule, but uh, Terminator for me is the best is the series showing the series of what you could do with the best and the worst, only because it, it comes up in conversation all the time. But the first movie, when you look at it, is a horror movie. It's a low budget horror movie with mm-hmm. a kind of a cool sci fi twist to it. And instead of going down the route of let's just do the same thing, they do it, but in such a way that it ups everything and it pluses everything and it becomes such a unique and better movie and then also makes the previous movie better. Mm-hmm. Well, the the best thing about Terminator 2 is they like they're like let's change the genre. Which also Action, James baby. Cameron did it with Aliens, Aliens too, yeah. where it's like all right, what's well, a, a horror, horror movie, movie. It's but a sci-fi horror I'd say. When you've already Action. when you've pulled the mask off the the beast or whatever to try and make it a horror movie, you're going to get one of these numerous sequels again mm-hmm. and again and again. You're not scared anymore, so you have to stimulate the audience with some sort of something else, probably blood, violence, gore, whatever. This where you're like, well, it's action. Let's change the genre and let's let's swap it so that way the bad guy is the good guy. Classic Dragon Ball Z tactic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, and so and now let's see it from this new perspective. Also, of course, what it did with the characters, where the damsel in distress is now a gun-toting, you know, badass. Mm -hmm. The only problem with Terminator 2 is that every single movie that came afterwards Mm -hmm. is just Terminator 2 again, only worse. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, or a completely different movie. But that's sort of what I was getting at where the second movie they said, oh, cool, what could we do if we had more money in this universe? Mm -hmm. And they went, go nuts. And they go, cool, cool. And then moving forward, they give it to other people and go, what do we do with the third one? Like, wow, well, we've done liquid and we've done mm-hmm. metal. What about like I a don't woman? Know, woman, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like, uh, what does she do? I don't know. Magnets, liquid or and metal. Nags, everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that, 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 that's sort of the shame where the James Cameron, I would assume, his vision wasn't finally have money. I can make it liquid. <laughs> he yeah. just went. I'm looking for an interesting concept and in what is like. What is the antithesis of antithesis of this character that's a, like a walking tank? Well, it's a sleek chameleon mm-hmm. type character. So now it adds a new interesting layer. By the time you get to the third one, they're just thinking of like, how can we just do more of the same? And then the fourth one, well, we're going to change it all up. And that didn't work. And yeah. then, they, well, then they're well, like, well, let's go back. And, and when your biggest point of plot evolution is just that you're adding a different skin to mm-hmm. your body, like that's not really mm-hmm. yeah. any evolution at all. Yeah, it's it's sort of, it's frustrating. I, I have a more fun time with it with something like RoboCop, where the first one's just so silly and the sequel is not as good, but it's a bit more forgivable because you're like, well, they just gave him a robot to fight and that's okay. <laughs> he likes drugs <laughs> and that's fine with me. Uh, but yeah, going back to the list, uh, probably the biggest offender in this entire thing is Look Who's Talking how to. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> yeah, how dare you? Yeah. There was a new kid. Totally different movie. I Completely love Look Who's Talking concept. Now. New Do- dog, the dogs. <laughs> That's when they just gave up. Yeah. That's my favorite one. What's the name of the dog? Cat. Rocks. Cat. Why is his name Do- Rocks? That's what he left in the back seat. <laughs> ah, <laughs> in the back seat. Wasn't that Danny DeVito? Yep. Oh, man. God. Yeah. So, oh, that was Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis is the kid. Oh, yeah. Okay. Roseanne is his sister. Mm-hmm. Then Michael the J. Dog, Fox. Dog Rocks is Danny DeVito. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And then who and, plays? Uh, I'm gonna say I don't remember. I'm gonna say Diane Keaton. <laughs> 
I think it might be Seems Diane like Diane Keaton, Keaton, right? Yeah. For, for who? For the, for the female, female dog, dog and the look poodle. talking now. It's so, Diane Keaton, right? It's got to be Diane Keaton. So sim- um, similar to... I'm going to say right. Sharon Stone. Similar to other movies in the genre, like Homeward Bound, uh, you as a kid don't realize you're watching something stupid no, because no. you're like, oh, of course, the dog's talking, but it's just someone doing a voice overall. A camera guy's filming a dog saying, still, stay still. Yeah. <laughs> similar to this, we're like, stay still, baby. Bruce Willis will be talking. And then they thought it was a it was a nice neat little concept. Actually, the story of the original Look Who's Talking is kind of sweet. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Woman gets plowed by her boss. Yes, he doesn't want the baby. Nope. She throws a diaper on his expensive desk, and then she meets a gay pilot, and they fall in love. <laughs> and <laughs> he they, wasn't a pilot yet. Oh, that, he wanted to be a pilot. He was a taxi driver right. who who had a, a dad with dementia. Yeah, <laughs> and would break into movie theaters, and they fell in love. Mm-hmm. That sperm scene taught me a lot as a child. Mm-hmm. I always wonder how they the filmed Beach that. Boys. They put a camera up in a up vagina. in Christie Alley's up John Travolta's penis. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> how the hell did they do that? Can you show a clip from Luke who's talking now? I just want to see it. Sure, it's been so years. But since once seen. again, so they do the same thing. They release a sequel because they go, "Oh, this is easy. We just." Film John Travolta and Chrissy Alley holding things, and then they'll do the voiceover later. Mm. And then by the third one, they said, and now the dogs are talking. Not great. It's great. To me, this is a perfectly good evolution for the sequels. I don't know what your complaints are for this. Father of the Bride, in terms of this is how you seek, this is how you serialize a comedy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to figure out how to bring it, bring back in that concept that won us over the first time. Right. But up the ante. Right. The same but different. The same have the but mom different. be pregnant too. Yeah, look at this. This is great stuff. We're going to have music and stuff. That's got to be Diane Keaton, right? I it looks like it her is. as a I dog. I think it's Diane Keaton. I just don't know what it, how if this is pushing the genre forward. The genre <laughs> of talking animal movies? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Mile and Otis of the <laughs> you're, world. You're expecting too much from mm-hmm. from humanity. I ac- absolutely Come am. On, Someone Adam. who grew up Come watching on. Look Who's Talking, I you guys are Trash people, if you think Look Who's Talking To is worth its salt and that Look Who's Talking Now is even worthy. Dogs. I, you don't like watching dogs? You guys make sometimes so I call it Look Who's Talking Also <laughs> because that's how it's meant to be read. Well, that's how it was uh, marketed in Europe. No, it was marketed that way here. Yeah. It's also a great story about you know class uh, relations because the – Poodle dog looks down on the junkyard dog, and then True. they fall in love. Uh, of your list, the most egregious one to me is Grease 2. That's literally the same movie mm-hmm. with, what's her name? Diane, with Diane a, Keaton. No, and, it's Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Isn't isn't Samwise Ganji in that? <laughs> yes, he actually is. All right. And then uh, Evil Dead 2 is so much better than Evil Dead 1, even though they're, they're the well, same no, movie. Well, no, that's the same movie, yeah. Yes. Exactly. I will. We'll talk more about that in a second, but first right. let's hear from our sponsor, Manscaped. Oh. Breaking news, this important PSA is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is your pubic service announcement. The Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. But hey, for reals, we've been talking about Manscaped for a little while now. Their all new Lawnmower 3.0 is is actually a game changer. We have one here, still in the box. I have one at home. I actually love it. I've been trying to find a good sort of grooming tool for down there and something that doesn't leave your wobbly bits all sort of in a world of pain. But uh, actually, thankfully, this bad boy found it. It actually works. I legit like this thing. They've upgraded from their 2.0 model. They added a 7,000 RPM motor with quick stroke technology. I am not making that up. That is in the ad copy. It's all these fancy features in there, but it's a really just a complicated way of saying it trims down there and it looks a lot better and it feels better. It's got a sleek charging station and a 90 minute battery letting even the most hairy of us look our best down there. So trim that junk of yours, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code filmhouse20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code filmhouse20 and as always your balls will thank you thank you manscaped so ryan you yeah. touched on something before we went away and talked about uh shaving ourselves uh evil dead 2 i think is one of the best examples of how you actually do a sequel slash remake because i'm talking original original evil dead super low budget sam raimi know. movie well, and then he continue oh no well he made that movie and it's okay the original one i think is Fine. Then he made the sequel, essentially remaking the movie, and I felt like it was infinitely better. Call me crazy. 
No, I, I totally agree, but I don't know if that's like like it's a very confusing trilogy in that yeah. way. Because if you if you tell Doesn't people watch sense. Evil Dead one and two, you're like, wait a minute, isn't it? Then I just see this. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that's the model for how you should make no, a trilogy. Not. But it is. It, I I are do. We, are we calling it a trilogy? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's Army like of Darkness do-over. is the trilogy. I guess the, uh, the third. Yeah. It's like that's like George Miller making Mad Max yeah. in twenty. Uh, what was it twenty? I, Ten, it's 11? fine to call it a like, do-over, I, but having it a, a, a two at the end of it. It's officially called Evil yeah, Dead two, 2, and it's it's. <laughs> I mean, I and I'm Bruce Campbell's book. I'm pretty sure, sure he talked about how they all thought that was really stupid, but mm-hmm. the studio was like, "We're only going to give you the money to make this if you call it Evil yeah, Dead two. Yeah, it's a total because marketing you, thing because yeah. a thousand people went to see the original at midnight and didn't care that it <laughs> looked like a movie that a bunch of guys who were lost in the woods filmed <laughs> in their spare time in Tennessee, baby. Oh yeah. But then I, I would say even Army of Darkness, which you don't have to have seen. Even Evil Dead yeah. 2, yeah. and to enjoy Evil Dead 2, you don't have to have seen Evil Dead 1. They all stand on their own. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have they have a good recap section at the beginning of every movie, mm-hmm. so th- that makes you don't have to watch the other ones. It's, yeah. They're the most... They're, all of the movies, I appreciate ha- their humility. Yeah. They all assume you haven't seen the previous yeah. one. They're like, DIY Thank you for coming pieces. out. And let's just, if you've never seen Film House before, this is a podcast. Yeah. Where, like, <laughs> that's, that's basically what all of the movies right. do. <laughs> I always appreciated that. Well, and then they did the Evil Dead remake, which Sam Raimi didn't you know, direct, but he produced. And I, uh, like you say, Annalise, I really enjoyed that movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, well, it's it was, super fun. I think that was a great example of a remake because it was like, as opposed to Untoward Darkness, the Star Trek one, where mm-hmm. they were like, we're just going to swap these two things. It was like, you kept waiting for the things to happen that you know are supposed to happen in the Evil Dead movies, and then they were like would, but then kind of wouldn't. And you're like, oh, well, something... And then it would get to the same point eventually, but in a completely different way. I appreciate... I, mm-hmm. I really like this one a lot. Yeah. Uh, I actually... And I, I would recommend watching the Evil Dead series that was short-lived on Stars. I watched a couple episodes. It was good. awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ash vs. the Evil Dead? Ash vs. the Evil... Yeah. It was fucking awesome. It's, uh, it, it's actually... I, I think that's how you do these sort of sequel remakes correctly. There's very few examples of where they work, but I think typically... And who knows how involved Sam Raimi is in with these things, but... Maybe he, he cares enough that he's like, okay, yeah. we'll do more only if it's as good. As far as I'm concerned, there's Sam Raimi and there's Sam Paimi. You know, <laughs> and it's, it's the How level of involvement <laughs> varies based on which one. Yeah. You came up with that, what, 45 minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if, if the conversation circled back, I figured I would inject it. But. Uh, Army of Darkness, favorite movie growing all, up. Really? Of, of all wow. time. I, Man. Uh, and Sam Raimi, favorite filmmaker. It's so really fun. I have a weird relationship with these movies, too, because Army of Darkness was coming out in theaters around the time that I was a kid, and so you'd see the trailer on TV, and you're like, this just looks wild. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know what's going on. I had seen Evil Dead 2 already as a kid, and I didn't know they were related to each other. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was very confusing. And then, like, yeah, I ended up watching it when I was older on VHS, or I'm like, oh, they, those are, oh, holy crap, and then realizing that it was like a sequel, and that's ah, amazing. So, yeah. Uh, I We could do one of two things. We can keep talking about these movies, or we can play a little fun game that I think we'd all be really good at. Hmm. We write our own Final Destination. Ooh. Okay. So if for those who have not been watching or you're listening or have never seen a uh, Final Destination franchise, Elise, uh, the movie always starts off with a big event that kills multiple people where they could be capable of being murdered horrifically. But one character has a premonition and then talks them up. I basically talked about it earlier. It's the exact same thing, but it's always that they just swap the location. It's always a pallet swap. So we are now... Because we, we have fallen on hard times here at Funhouse. We need to go to Hollywood and pitch our Final Destination movie. So we need our location. Where can a lot well, of people die? Well, I was going to say, everything starts with that first that first set piece because we've already established that's how they make those movies, mm-hmm. not with the characters or with the narrative. Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw it out here because a lot of these movies, you want to be able to place them in time and space. They tap into the, the cultural zeitgeist of things. You put it at like a VidCon. Like a convention, I was going to say a Comic Con or yeah. something like that, okay. right? And then, and so the opening, like some, there's something goes wrong at one of these things. Someone has an elaborate cosplay that that sets something on fire that also causes sta- a stage mm-hmm. to fall apart that mm-hmm. has a lot of scaffolding and collapses on top of people. People are maybe doing that that giant inflatable obstacle course mm-hmm. but they're consumed by it or mm-hmm. it pops and sends them flying off like in different a selfie places. light blows up or something like a that. a lot of a lot of social media people a tiktok filter mm-hmm. that shows you that shows your head get cut off but then her head actually does get cut off 
Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of stuff like that. It would be my pitch for the opening. Do you want a pitch for an opening? I, I was gonna go, yeah, kind of. If you have, if you do it at like Comic Con or something, then you'd have, yeah, all these really funny cosplayers' bodies getting strewn around everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. that'd be a really funny image. Mm-hmm. I was gonna, obviously. My brain first went to a run fair. Okay, that'd be a fun place oh. mm. to okay. have it happen. Somebody, you know, choking on the drumstick from a giant uh, chicken bone, mm-hmm. and then uh, a knight actually getting impaled during the joust. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's a fake. Maybe the the falconer that's got the falcon. The falcon goes crazy, uh-huh. and uh, like I think there's just a lot of fun stuff you could okay. do. What um, if what if we you inverse it in the way that like, all right, what if all right you're there <laughs> you're you're uh uh. uh you start off on an alien ship, and there's a whole bunch of aliens like that are about to go like into battle on mm-hmm. Earth because okay. they're about to attack Earth mm-hmm. and stuff, you know. And then you cut to Earth and stuff, and you see just people living their lives and like the. But then the, this alien ship blows up, and you have the final destination thing happen to the aliens that were about to kill all of us. Wait, so the aliens are the main characters? Yes, they're escaping death. Yes. Do they what have- can we maybe make it more subtle, <laughs> where there's a there's a Maybe. SpaceX more, launch more so? type thing. SpaceX works. And they're going yeah. to, so there's That's a couple fine. astronauts and stuff that mm-hmm. get into the thing. And then it ha- like they're like, oh, and it com- like everything goes wrong. But then in this version, maybe we need to get social media involved too. Oh man, she gets late. Her- they're gonna like we're gonna perform laser eye surgery, and mm-hmm. then it, for some reason that laser also blasts her face to smithereens. Uh. Um, but. Uh, then so there's like a space extra launch, but then someone has a vision and then they see, oh, it's not gonna. But then one by up. one, they mm. all get. We'll sort out the killing of all of them as mm. it goes. But the twist at the end of the movie is that it's aliens. It doesn't take place on Earth. Okay, okay. it was I'm going to be a launch to invade Earth. You got me. And so the end is like, okay, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna fix it, and then we they send off the launch, and that's how it works. There's the meta like approach it. where you think you're at the beginning of a Final Destination movie. Cut, pull out. It's the film set on the set of the next Final Destination movie, uh-huh. and then stuff starts going wrong oh, on the film shit. set oh. and killing everyone. And everyone's like, "Is oh this part of the movie?" Is this part of, yeah, shit. like, well, is this just the part of the movie gone wrong? Yeah, that's real good. Good. and then, the, but then that the, that start of that movie becomes the Final Destination movie, and they go, yeah. we shoot with it. Like, we shouldn't have fucked with Final Destination. We shouldn't have touched this. And like, then all the things that maybe like they were pitching in the p- writers' room start happening to them. It's like, oh, you know, like you know, remember that stupid. <laughs> death that that Kyle pitched it happened to him at his home last night you know yeah. Yeah. well like that's the writer's assistant the yeah. plucky young writer's assistant yeah. is right. the first one to notice that all the deaths that have been happening since the set accident matched the r- r- first draft yeah, on the, the on the on, on the, the dry, dry erase, erase board, <laughs> and she's like, "It's doing the script. It's making the movie." <laughs> erase and the board. It's not erasing. Yeah, yeah, death is stealing our copyrighted script that we wrote. So then yeah. they have to go find the writer of the first movie, who's yes. since, who's since gone and he's, he's a recluse because mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. he doesn't want to be connected to the. He lost his wife right. to a final destination. And his name Stutter Kane or something. Or <laughs> was this, wait, there was a Final Destination six, and his name was. Brian Ryan Singer. I didn't even and know. They have that. to go find Planting. him. Well, just so we know, just for just so we're clear. Yeah. First one, plane. Second one, freeway. Third one, NAS- roller, coaster. roller coaster. Fourth one, NASCAR. Fifth uh, one, bridge. Fifth one was the bridge, and now sixth, sixth one, one, cruise. It would appear. I didn't know this movie existed. So we can avoid all the. It's only two years ago. Um, yeah, they just they just. Oh, keep, I got Lee you know, of Shriver, that, and that's how we know that it's connected to so the Scream done, universe. Like, roller coaster, but they've and never the done universe. like a Disney. I mean. The, the the a fantastic one would be, and this is your dream situation because obviously this would never happen. But Disneyland, right? Well, mm-hmm. yeah, I can't. I mean, but I mean, you can't do a theme park because they already did the roller coaster. So yeah. I mean, but I'm we, with you. We need to get we need to come up with at least four solid concepts because mm-hmm. we want to get to Final Destination X. <laughs> I, oh yeah, we, which I, would be the space <laughs> one, <laughs> okay, or the pirate I, one. I want to throw out my spot. my one yeah, suggestion. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so. Let's have it. I know we we had a lot of a lot of craziness. My only suggestion: we go back in time. To 1996, and you find out that that the security guard from the Olympics, Richard Jewell, <laughs> actually st- that was the original Final Destination. <laughs> oh, he stopped. Oh, he stopped. No. <laughs> Jewell. Yeah, he stopped a much bigger. Like there was a, a woman who did die from the bombing, but imagine 
he saved a bunch of people, and we see their story. There is a bomb in Centennial Park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> – anyway. So, okay, now we got to figure out our deaths. Uh, mm-hmm. We've got seven Which characters. one are we doing, though? we got to hone we'll just, in on this one. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to flip a coin. One? Uh, movie one. That's fine. It's okay. The, it's weird. It's meta. Okay. We can make it happen. All right. So the deaths written on the dry erase board. Mm-hmm. Are they not all happening around sets, I assume? No. Well, one character, because it happens to random people. So one character is a teacher. One person is a, I'll just go security guard. Um, Mm -hmm. And then the other character is like a uh, surgeon for uh, plastic surgery, but just for butts. There has to be a male character that wants to bang a female character, just so you know. Because the, the, most of those movies are just lingering looks. Mm-hmm. Real creepy lingering looks from a guy that doesn't deserve the woman. There's a seven? No, what this is a fake fun? trailer. No probably. Way. No. <laughs> okay. Anyway, keep going. Sorry. No, so, so, so. Two characters need to bang. That's easy. Well, he wants to bang. They don't uh-huh. bang, but he wants to bang. Uh-huh. Also, generally, the way it ends is with life. They stop it by having life. Happen. Life discovered on so, alien planets. No, wait, th- we're not doing that. No, we're not doing we're that. Doing that one. We're doing the movie one. We're doing yours. We're we doing the movie one. Mine sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the aliens. <laughs> what are things that can happen? That could be in the script though, on a movie writing. set. Well, there's always the the quick one where someone just gets hit by a truck. There's or always those. Th- that one where the guy got decapitated from the train uh, shrapnel. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that one. We need to do something where s- someone's – a lot of times things fall on people. Mm-hmm. We need to do something where some guy just walks by a construction site every single day. And then – but then something happens. They go, look out, and the thing drops. But then he gets a hard hat on, and then it – so it bangs off the hard hat, and he's like <sighs> – Oh, thank God. And then a water main shoot blasts <laughs> oh. out from below him and then and then completely and destroys he's standing his, on a sewer his, or something. Yeah, his lower torso. Like yeah. something where he survived it and he's like, Oh thank God. Uh-huh. But it dinged a water main that I, shoots out and blows say, his butt. You just cut to the part in Saving Private Ryan where the Nazi shoots the guy when he takes it home. Oh thank God. Basically, yeah. yeah. Basically that. Oh, it's the thing we haven't discussed. What? This is a final destination in a different time period. Like they've all. He was been, talking about. Oh, you did. Just yeah. Oh that my idea. god! I just zoned out. <laughs> like a like an old timey <laughs> frontiers yeah. frontiers oh. village. Yeah, that's what. I, wait, what were you? What were you talking? I was about? saying 1996. But oh no no, I, no 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 no! I meant like World War II. Like Oliver Twist. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. all, all these guys are like, we survived World War II. Like, yeah, a lot of people did, and a lot of people didn't, Jim. Yeah, that's like, what I meant. I like, meant like. Oh, what if, what if it's a bunch of people who think there's a curse happening, but they're like, no no PTSD. Like, oh, wow. okay, like, fuck, yeah. really messed up things. Oh, I yeah. don't know that that's going to... That's Again, that's we're not th- talking about the heart of the movie, which okay. is well, all of the nonsense. If you're doing the one where it's the film, the set, the film within the film, uh-huh. you got to figure out what your your fake movie st- stunt is at the top of the film that makes you mm-hmm. think you're watching oh. a real Final Fantasy movie, but you're you're just on the film <laughs> set. What movie? Final Fantasy? What did I say? <laughs> Final, 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 Final Destination movie, but you're just on the film set. Um, uh. So... Uh, well, I, here's one idea I know we could definitely easily execute. There's a scene where one of the characters, he's like a rich producer, right? His dad got him the job. He owns the studio. Mm-hmm. And he's talking to one of his friends. He's telling about the opening to Ghost Ship. And he, he's like, I've, I haven't seen it. He goes, I'll show you. There are no copies of Ghost Ship available. And no one has a DVD player. Uh, so in yeah. and, and a, and a crazy no twist, he recreates the opening to Ghost Ship, hires actors as the whole thing, just so it can show him how cool it was. And that's how he dies. On the ghost ship? No, uh, he trips and falls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a loose stair or something, and he, uh, he how about cr- cracks one, his neck. One where a guy goes to the doctor's office just for a regular checkup, uh-huh. right? But he, as he's sitting there waiting for the doctor to come back after, like, getting the blood test, he's sitting there, and then the machine next to him turns on. But then the doctor walks in and goes, oh, sorry about that. You have cancer. <laughs> You probably won't survive another Riveting. year and a half. Yeah. yeah, and then he's like, "Oh!" And then it goes, tr- and then you, you pan out the window, and Tony Todd's there, staring, watching, because he's always present for right. that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, audio listeners, uh, we just saw a really great there's Final a, Destination behind there was, the scenes. There's a character who looks like he's holding his own sex doll. Yeah. Can you uh, take a screen grab and put that as our background? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that has I think we go we we subdue it a little bit, you know, quieter death. Yeah. One of the women who survived is a 93 year old woman. 
and she passes quietly in her in her bed just two two to, two or three days later, okay. surrounded by loved ones. So, and then I think what we do in this movie, which I'm pretty sure they did they did at some point uh, in one of the other films, is everyone's dead. There's one character left. He finds a way to die, like drown, mm-hmm. but he's resuscitated. And like, well, you died, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's all we needed. Yeah, you but, need to, you need life mm-hmm. to. to Beat death. They haven't done a subway one yet. Something that takes place in a subway. Mm. Like Jared comes in and just starts going to town. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Everyone has heart attacks. Like it's poison food. <laughs> I don't know. I think like a virus. Anyway, so that was a little game I wanted to play. It's called what, Final Destination, A New Beginning. What if it starts and it's Jesus' crucifixion day? And then all of a sudden, he just falls off of the thing. And then him and the other two guys run away. And then they're like, oh, shit. What, the, what just happened? And then yeah. it's like... G- biblical final destination. Yeah, he yeah. needed to die Boy, to come up for you, out. Judas. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh, I love these final destination movies. <laughs> May they never stop making them for as long as we live. Uh, you, you know what movies? You, you know, it belongs in this list kind of, but I would put it even in a different kind of category. Mm-hmm. Of uh, have you seen Jarhead too? There's, no. I think there's a whole Jarhead trilogy. <laughs> yeah, so Jarhead is like this, you know, cool Sam Mendes like art house war movie that's like has no war stuff in it, and it's like mm-hmm. anti-war. But then Jar- Jarhead Two is just basically like a badass fucking, oh, you know, it's no. like the exact Rah. opposite of what Jar- Jarhead is. is yeah. You know, it's right. like a Michael Bay uh, war movie. Isn't wow, that, isn't that sort of like a Sicario situation where the first movie was Sicario Two is kind of like the first one though? Yeah, it's and it was written by the same guy, but people sort of had that issue where like. Oh, everyone's kind of a bad guy in this movie. Like, but what if we redeem him? Like, well, that kind of shits on his character from yeah. the first one. But hey, if you're not going to get the same director, or whatever. Another one also is like Starship Troopers two and three and oh, stuff. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like like all the satire and smart stuff from the mm-hmm. first one is just kind of reduced to this mm-hmm. shitty made for DVD. What did people love about Starship Troopers? <laughs> uh, oh, let me blow your guys' mind. The bug um, gore. A new Doom movie came out recently. Doom? Oh, yeah. yeah. The one that's nice. on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's like an animated. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. I think. <laughs> no one no. knows. Was it Doom Annihilation? Maybe it, it's not. No, it's it's live action. It's just... It came out. Okay. But when I never I, saw the first Doom movie, oh, so... When I saw the you didn't fr- see the one with The Rock? No. There's a live or uh, first person sequence at the end. It's actually like, kind of cool. That's the only. Or it was I've cool seen. back then. <laughs> it was cool back then <laughs> now, for the three minutes. I haven't seen it since. A, a common theme here, I, and a lot of you have said, and I know a lot of people are either thinking it or they want to leave a comment saying this. A lot of these movies have cool scenes. I'm not saying bad movies or bad sequels can't have cool scenes because mm-hmm. we all know that first person shooter scene in Doom is probably the best scene in cinematic history. Mm-hmm. Remember when he turns around the corner and the imp sees him and then he runs a away? Point where the rock gets a pull through his hand, so he decides to just bend it around the rest of his <laughs> forearm to use it as a weapon. As right. As Simplify, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. See? It's in first person. Mm-hmm. That's a cool scene. And there's a wheelchair monster. See? He runs away. He goes, oh, God. He's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, he's got a gun. He's like yelling to the other <laughs> oh, guys. <laughs> Get it down, Carl Urban, not The Rock. <laughs> no, you, don't worry about it. I believe that came out. I want to say the same year as uh, the the second Riddick movie, oh, which is another movie. Six, maybe what something around then. Like yeah, the second Riddick movie. Well, the first one was Pitch Black. Oh yeah, okay. And yeah. I would say You're talking Chron- about the Chron- yeah the Chronicle- Riddick trilogy. Yeah, yeah. There yeah. are three. Two thousand five. Okay, yeah. So that came. That was that was like Carl Urban's year. It's actually never been Carl Urban's year, unfortunately. Mm. He he'll get it one day. He's maybe. fine. He's fine. He's, he's probably good. doing. He's in the boys. He's great. Everything's. Are, okay. You follow the Quirk of Mew? Did you just, what? This the Chronicles of Riddick cinematic universe. Oh, nice! Wow, you're a <laughs> duh. Did you just come up with that? Yeah, you're a. You're just a savant. Sam, <laughs> pay me. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, producer credit. <laughs> my favorite part is when Riddick walks up to Thandie Newton <laughs> and says, it's been a long time since I've smelled beautiful. And he mm. thinks he's referring to her, but mm. I just make it. It just sounds like he hasn't had a bath in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and he's looking in a mirror. So. Something he says to himself. Uh, we're going to be wrapping the show up. But before we get to that part, let me tell you about our sponsor, Upstart. Between hitting the gym, eating cleaner, and learning a new skill, there's a lot of ways we can better ourselves in the new year. But I can't think of something that's more important than starting the new year by tackling high interest credit card debt. That's right, my friends at Upstart 
Upstart.com are here to help. Upstart is the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter rates to help you pay off those high interest credit card debts and get you on your way. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when addressing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They actually believe in you. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate. Since it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. That hard pull happens if you accept your rate. The best part, once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day, the next day. Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. So free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt today by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. So go ahead and see why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash filmhouse to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and that's upstart.com slash filmhouse. Thank you, Upstart. All right, everyone, we talked about all the Requels and sequels and squeakquels squeak squeak mm-hmm. that we just hate. squeak makes. Uh, to go down the entire list on here, I had the Friday 13th series, Jurassic Park 3, Grease 2, Saw 2, Open Water 2, Look Who's Talking 2, Final Destiny 2, The Scent 2, Evil Dead 2, and uh, that was about it. And you guys all brought in your things. Yeah. Jarhead, I think, was a great Paranormal one. Activity. N- American Psycho 2. N- next me. Karate Kid, just Karate Kid with the woman. Speed 2, just Speed with the Good boat. boat. I yeah. mm, next Karate Kid, a whole new host of issues. Uh, <laughs> okay, You're I agree. Right. I like that movie. I used to watch that movie would come on all the time on HBO. I'd order nachos and watch that movie again and again. <laughs> remember, she goes to visit the monks. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember, and it's her birthday, and they sing Happy Boss Day to her. <laughs> Guys, remember? <laughs> sure, that's how she trains. Uh, the only thing you need to be a good martial artist is to be able to jump from one rock to another <laughs> rock and not touch the sand. Basically, I got Mister Blues yeah. Brothers two thousand fucking sucks. I mean that's a we- that's just a cash grab though, right? Well, the, uh, Maybe. Are, isn't that what this podcast is about? Is kind the, of. These are all cash grabs. About, sort of. I it's mean, it's when people were corrupted by the. But there was a good yeah. concept, a good film, and people s- only saw one color mm-hmm. of the spectrum mm-hmm. of colors portrayed in that film and said, "This is what this franchise. is. This is what is going to grab us the cash. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. get it. Yeah, I think it's make it. it. It's when there's some sort of property that you enjoy or you can see on multiple levels and go, oh, wow, they were doing a lot of cool smart stuff with this. And people go, yeah, I like the explosions. <laughs> and you go, well, you got that. That's cool. Awesome. But, like, you know, it does these really cool other things. So, mm-hmm. Boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then more often than not, the, the explodey guy who likes all the bright colors is the producer fronting the money. <laughs> so that's a lot of what you get. Speaking of which, i uh, just going to round out this podcast with a couple of news stories. Netflix is going to be spending more than $17 billion on content in 2020. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I got a little chart here, too. In 2019, original content spend estimates were uh, Disney at the top with $27.8 billion. Comcast, almost at half of that, or, well, yeah, pretty close, 15.4. Netflix, um, back last year, only, only spent $15 billion on original content. Uh, and that pretty much rounds out your, uh, Man, your top you, three. If you don't get a Netflix, if, if you, listener, and everyone here doesn't have a Netflix show by the end <laughs> of 2020, oh. you're in the minority We're losers. officially. Yeah, officially exactly. in the Well, you can watch my show where I pitch a new Final Destination every week. And Didn't, we see uh, what happens. I'd, I'd listen to that. I think Netflix Watch. revealed that they did take a hit because of the launch of Disney Plus, right? Mm-hmm. They probably shouldn't say that. But I think they, d- I think they did this week. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know how they do it or how there's enough to. people around in the on the planet to mm-hmm. all. If we all subscribed, will that even pay back what they spent last year? I mean, someone do the math out there. Well, stop using your mom's account, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> She I mean, I think it. part of it, too, I think some of this is like buying real estate, though. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, it's not necessarily subscriber. There's a value to owning this content, right? There's a value to owning properties, as we've seen Disney spending so much money to just buy concepts, right? right we but how do you make Star Mar- Wars, How are right? they going to be profitable? Though, well, right? it's not about necessarily being profitable that year. At some point, it's it about, should be. It's about throwing, casting the widest net and then imagine if you cast a net and whatever fish you brought back, you owned that fish, like salmon. Salmon was the fish. And now anytime anyone else wanted salmon, they had to pay you. Uh-huh. I think that's what it is. Everyone's right. just trying to c- come up with IP mm-hmm. and own that IP. We'll go to the logical extreme, though. What if they spent $500 billion and they're like, all right, we got 100% of the market, like, mm-hmm. but we're spending <laughs> this much money. Like, it's not sustainable, you know? It's like... Like your the chickens are gonna come home to roost at some point. I mean, yeah, to these at people. some point. Yeah, I think I think the assumption is 
thanks to the fact that there is a sixth final destination that no one knew existed, <laughs> uh, people run out of ideas. That and alone, ultimately, yeah. Disney will own them all. <laughs> and you, James, yeah. win this round of Filmhouse where you found the theme mm-hmm. of this week's episode. It's for all of you to go out there and come up with an original new idea so Disney can buy it. They're not going to buy our ideas. Really? No. Why not? Because it's not family friendly? Because they're just going to pay other people to come up with better ideas than our ideas. But our ideas are good. Yeah. It, everything they write on the whiteboard kills them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Disney probably owns Final. If we dig far enough, we probably see that Disney owns Final Destination. So everything we came up with, they technically right. They, they bought the rights <laughs> to death. They're in sniffing around Lord of the Rings right now. I want to know what Discovery Channel's up to with that four point six billion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess. How wait, many new uh, little big little people big worlds are we gonna get? <laughs> hey, Shark Tank, Shark Week's expensive, James. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe, something like that. Anyway, that is our show this week. Thank you guys for joining us. And you can catch more of this show online, wherever you find your podcasts in video and audio form. Most likely Spotify, Google, all those things, wherever you do it. Stitcher, where do you guys listen to your podcast? I use Podcast Addict app. Hmm. I use Pocket Cast. Google Play. Okay. Apple Podcasts. Weird. What a weird. You know, share it with a friend. Yeah, that'd be fantastic if you enjoy little shows like this. Uh, once again, Dan is out. I forgot to mention that. He's uh, he's given a birth to a baby all by himself. Which is okay. how the Final Destination movies end with life, mm-hmm. like he's we said. Us. All coming full circle. So if you want to avoid death, have a baby. Final Destination thoughts. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you, Terry Jones. I would just love to go back in time when they're filming the first song on like a shoestring budget. It's just these film students are like, we've got this crazy idea, and then you're the sound guy, and you're like, is this connected to Home Alone? <laughs> I just want I you. Think, I think the, the, guy, the jigsaw is all grown up. I just Tell want you guys else. to know that Danny Glover completed his scenes for the first Saw movie in two days.